guys are all in their 40s, 50s. They've been out the game for a while, right? Rich Cooper's never been like a real thug. He's never been a real pill, red pill. He's just kind of like a fucking, like he's just like a, a, a rip off a duplicate kind of guy. Yeah. Like, parroting his shit. But a lot of these guys, they never really lived that life. And so yeah. they were trying to like put it into words. And I was just like, I learned over the years because I started saying Money Muscles Game, then everybody started saying it. And then somebody bought moneymusclesgame.com. Motherfucker. Son of a bitch, right? I know. <laughs> that is so fucked up. So then 2021, though, I went through a, a, a very big personal change in my life. And I learned through my, my good dude, uh, King Dre, and. Um, uh, a couple other people, Paul from Apex Mindset. Paul's a great guy. You got to get him out here if you can. And um, a couple of guys from my inner game, uh, Ryan Fowler from innermasculine.com. And these dudes had taught me that I had bad frame. And so I started studying frame and I started understanding frame. And then I started realizing that is the most important component of masculinity. I so agree with you more you than just, anything. You know what I'm saying, bro? More than anything. And guess what? Oh, that's one of the things I was going to bring up at a certain point. <laughs> Is how big of a deal frame is. Thank Dude, you for saying that. It's true. It's true. So Listen, true. I'm telling you, I'm five, seven years ahead of the red pill in the manosphere. Everybody's going to be talking about man, uh, frame and inner game soon. So You're I, so right. I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. And so I started talking about fucking uh, frame, and now like everybody's writing books about frame. And so it's, I, I, I jokingly say I'm the real godfather of the manosphere. You, you, know, you know it. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the thing about frame is Money Muscles Game Frame, it's just like it is everything that a guy must do to maintain an above average life to get above average women to have an above average ex experience you know what i mean yeah. cuz i i'm a little i'm a little like obsessed with death not like in that way but like i think about my death every way and every day especially you start to think about it because what's the two things men chase their entire life pussy and money pussy and money right yeah. And what happens when you get a fucking shitload of money and a shitload of pussy? You know what? You have like a You fuck, start doing stupid shit. You have like an existential <laughs> crisis. You have like – or at least for me, I was just like, fuck, I'm rich and I got all these hoes. I'm still going to die. And I was just like – just fucking – I was like depressed for like four months. That's like, crazy. Because I had – I you know, I put – I. I I had pedestalized making millions. At the peak, yeah. I make millions. I did fucking all these super hot girls. I went like in 2021, I went – I'm not trying to show off. I'm just keeping it a thousand. I went on four vacations and four different resorts with four different girls in that summer. And that shit was just awesome. It there was, was nothing better. Oh my God, bro. I was fucking, I was out of control, <laughs> but it was awesome. Mm -hmm. But then after that, the, like the, the existential crisis, the come down, yeah, really, the come down. Yeah, it always, yeah, that life is a roller coaster. Dude, yeah. you, you hit that high and then, Nobody tells you about the come down because you got to mm -hmm. fucking keep that dopamine coming yep. or you're going to frazzle out. And, you know, and then, and if you're not strong in your heart, as strong as you spiritually. think you are, spiritually, yeah, yeah, in your inner game, your frame, you'll crack. And that's what happened to me. I did crack. And I thought, and bro, I thought, I was like, I am unstoppable. I'm the fucking man. I'm 35. This was 2021. I was, I was 35. I made fucking $2 million in fucking two years. I got fuck all sub count on YouTube. Nobody knows who the fuck I am. I was just like, fuck everybody, you know? Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> you know, pride comes before the fall. And um, then I was humbled. But the thing is, when I was humbled, I also would realize I had a massive hole in my game, which is my frame. Yeah. And I went through a whole year and a half. Up to this day, I'm still working on my frame. That's my biggest thing. Dude, I, I would agree that I think that that's something that every man is always going to work. As somebody that's in a serious relationship for two years, and I've always – I've had five serious relationships where I've lived with every girl. Mm -hmm. Frame is something that every man is always going to work on. You're always going to fail shit test at least once. You're always going to – no man is perfectly unemotional at all times unless I think he's gay, honestly. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's – and the only reason why he's not emotional with that woman is because he truly doesn't have feelings for her, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, no. It, it's and – that, and that ties into the real solution to the whole red pill problem we have. It's not about teaching dudes to fuck a bunch of girls. It's about teaching the dude to get a – like eventually get a good woman and then move on with your life. And know how to keep her there without yes. scaring her away or – being stupid in some way yeah, yeah. and making i sure. think they mess it up all the time like they fuck it up all like i always tell guys i bet y'all failed a shit test and that's why your last relationship failed yeah like or or she was hypergamous because you were a broke ass loser you know yeah. <laughs> and then also like 
the vetting process of choosing a chick is really important too. Very true. Yeah. You know, because like, I think of like a lot of chicks, what they do, I would say the biggest problem the dudes have in America is the thirst. And then the biggest problem the girls have in America is just, it's just fucking sad, but it's like being hoes. Like yeah. The average girls. And then being hoe. titled after being a hoe, being like, oh, I'm a hoe, but I still deserve all this bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> nah, bro. Like, no. the streets call, man. The streets call. And <laughs> it's, it's, uh, no good. Th- those are the problems. The thirst and the hoeing. Yeah. I want to know, uh, what's the deal with Rolo's friend that you hate so much? I watched y'all's little New Year's thing. What's his name? Aaron Clary or what's his name? Oh, no, Aaron. No, dude. It's, 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 it's a <laughs> It's gig. just funny. It's so it's, funny, it's bro. It's a gig. No, it's a it gig. It makes me laugh every time, though. <laughs> no, me and, actually, me and Aaron Clary, I'm going to fly. So on Sunday, I'm flying to Cali to do whatever podcast. And then after that, I'm flying to Las Vegas to link up with Aaron Clary and Rolo. That's dope. So I'm going to be going on Rolo's show. Maybe I can get Aaron Clary to pull out his fucking Nokia phone and do a live stream. <laughs> Shit. I always wanted you to roast him at least one time on the show. Yeah. No, Aaron's, Aaron's, no, Aaron's real cool though. It makes me laugh because you do it so often. Every time I'm just like, I don't know who this guy is, but it's fucking hilarious. Every well, time because, he roasts him. because Aaron used to pick on this like little, this dude named TJ Martinelli. And I had to know the background. This is, yeah. how, this is why. And so he's always bullying TJ. TJ's like a nice guy. He's like a super nice guy. I'm like, why is anybody bullying Aaron? And one day I was just like, you know what, Aaron, shut the fuck up. Yeah. So no, Aaron's picking me up at the airport in Las Vegas. What well, we're Aaron will like me. He'll like me. Uh, um, I want to know where do you see Red Pill going in the next decade? In ten years, where do you see Red Pill at? Oh boy. Well, okay. Everything is tied to inner game. Everything. Your body weight, your money, the quality of women, the quality of relationships, right? All of this shit is. Can you explain inner game really quick, just so people understand that? Absolutely. So. Inner game is your self-esteem as a man and the relationship you have with yourself, how you talk to yourself, how you treat yourself, how you take care of yourself, how you spend money on yourself. A lot of you dudes, a lot of people, my my speciality is men because I'm a men's coach, (laughs) right? Okay. There's no bitches watching this thing. Yeah, they're right. It's not. It's ninety percent men, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm. I'm. I'm using logic and facts. You know. So of course it's men. Um. But yeah, you know the 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 frame thing. The, the inner game is is the most important component. And a lot of dudes they have like, look, uh, this is new to our time, but in America the majority of these households households are single mother households, right? Mm-hmm. And it is quantifiable. Whether ask two dudes from the streets or studies, single mother households are very chaotic. Yeah, more than a, a two family household, mm-hmm. right? So, what's happening is you're having these women because the women are the ones that are destroying relationships in America, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'm not trying to like be like women ain't shit, but just this is the truth. They're walking away. Women are quitting at an all time high rate. Yeah, and in the process of doing that, destroying the family. Yep. Literally destroying the family, fucking up the guy mentally, fucking up the ch- children mentally, and then she gets fucked up the least. Mm-hmm. Out of all those people, children suffer the first, they f- suffer the most, then the men, and then the wife less, right? Unless it's some extreme situation where the dude's like whooping her ass, which every woman's like, well, he's probably abusing him. No, look at the fucking numbers. No, yeah. right? Um, <clears throat> these chicks are walking away, and I heard that over 50% of divorce papers and proceedings have the words Facebook and Instagram in them. Oh my goodness, that's so sad. 20 years ago, we would have never seen it. You know, when I, when I see a girl that's addicted to social media, I just I just look at her and I'm like, you're an idiot. Like, I look down at people like that. I'm like, do you have no self-control? Like, oh. are you so fucked up in the head? But the answer is yes, and it goes back to this. These mothers, when they divorce the fathers, this is traumatizing yeah. on the children, no matter what the age. I, I know I have a friend of mine that when the mother in, did the divorce, he went into a spiral of depression for, for a while, long time, very bad. So shit happens to you. I'll use myself as an example. You know, I had an aunt that – you ever see The Water Boy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you know his mom, right? Yeah. So my aunt was like that, which was like <laughs> – you're drinking out of a red cup. Red cups are the devil. devil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so funny. You know, and everything was the devil, dude. So listen, I was actually a oh, good kid. No. I was doing Pokemon. 
I was playing Resident Evil 2, I was playing Final Fantasy 8 on PlayStation, but everything was the devil, the devil, the devil. Yeah. So they took the Pokemon cards, made me throw it away, right? I was my crying fucker. my fucking eyes out. First edition Charizard, first edition Blast Toys, oh, first no. edition B- fucking Zapdos, first edition, uh, what is it on the pink egg, Chaney? Uh, yeah. Anyways, I remember. So I did that, and then, you know, you, you get traumatized when you have these bad emotional situations. This happens to... You know, this happens to men. This happens to a lot to men. It, a lot of these men, not a lot, but it does happen that men get sexually molested. And mm-hmm. it's really hard for guys to talk about that. And they carry this shit with them into their 30s and 40s and 50s. It's way more suppressed. And it, it happens to members in the family, most likely. Yes. That happens yeah, to these yeah. guys, right? Yep. By men and by women. Women rape young boys too. And so – um when you have all these traumas, they, these are get they get stored in your subconscious mind, mm. right? And they cause a lot of emotional and mental turmoil when you don't have these things. You you keep on a lot of people ruminate on these things. Ruminating is when you stop and you start thinking about a negative thing that happened in the past over and over and over again. It's like wine festering, yeah. Right. It's it's kind of like you know, the law of attraction, but for negativity. Yes. You know what I mean? And people, it's called rumination. So it's like what Brandon Carter always talks about. Yeah. You th- think about it, it's going to happen. He Does he say it? What does he say? He always talks about how if you think about these things all the time, like it, it's like the guy who thought about how he the ball was going to go between his legs in the World Series and it actually happened to him. Right. If you think about these things all the time, it just makes it worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I believe in that, bro. I, I'll tell you another story later, but I thousand percent. I brainwashed myself into my success. <laughs> I'm straight up. No, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> but um, going back to this, so these subconscious traumas are stored in your mind, and they cause you to not function correctly and create situations of like self-sabotage too. This is why you'll see a person, for example, you know a guy, He his house is full of all the exercise gear. He has all the protein. He has all the supplements. He's got the Quest bars. He's got the Weight Watchers. He's got the Atkins. He's mm-hmm. got the muscle milk. But he still can't get his – he can't lose the weight because, you know, something's up here oh. that, that's wrong. It's like a, it's like a self-sabotage thing. Like they'll start doing good. They'll start hitting the gym consistently. They'll start changing the way they eat. They'll start doing all these good things. But when they get to this new realm of physical success, the kind of the, the, the vibration – I don't want to use that word vibration, but like, you know – the higher level of mental clarity that you have to be at in order to be a successful person. They get a taste of that, and then they're like, I'm not meant to have this. This feels weird. Yeah. Right? This is why you'll you'll see some girls when they're in a relationship and everything's going good, and then just don't fucking – you know, they'll flip the chest board. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know about all this because I've, I actually am diagnosed with BPD. So everything you're saying resonates with me heavily because uh, this is everything I've had to learn about myself. Yeah. Right. So I graduated with a bachelor's in science and psychology. So I studied this. So I'm, I'm not just. That's why to... you know it so well. Yeah. Right. And then, and I seen it in my community because here's the biggest thing about inner game, right? I had noticed that the effectiveness of my programs was not the problem because about 50% of the guys would take my stuff. Oh, actually I would say 30%, 30% of my guys would take my stuff, apply it and have massive success. Mm-hmm. Like damn bro. I, I made a course called salt, which is talk about how to like make a really high profile Instagram. I have a course called body language mastery, which teaches you how to read a woman's body language to know when she's sexually turned on, when she's turned off, when she's telling the truth, when she's lying. Oh, that's so good. It's my, I made a million bucks from selling that thing. That sounds like a really good course. Oh, I yeah. can see why. Click funnels, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they would take these courses and some of these dudes would have massive success, like big, 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 big success, right? And I'd be like, fuck yeah. But then the other half of guys, they would start to get some success, but then they would always regress and their regression and their fallback kind of became a little negative, toxic sad or rage filled one of those emotions but it pulled them to a dark place emotionally and then i started looking at these guys and interviewing them over the years and i'm like tell me about like what's going on mom? what happened with your mom and dad when you were little and the dudes that were well adjusted right i mean i have a good eye i can look at people and tell if they're well adjusted or not yeah you probably do you're, too. you're good at psychoanalysis yeah you too but extremely it, yeah and it's from the streets and it's also for real but by being raised by women to an extent yes you know what i mean and so um I could see these things 
And then I found out like, you know, like this, I had this one white guy, right? He came to the program. He's making like 70 G's a year. He fucking came in at the right time, doubled his salary up to like 140 and then like made close to a million in crypto in the 2021 bull run, right? Yeah. And I had another guy who had a better paying job than him, right? But was making more money per month, had more time and resources and everything, but couldn't get ahead. And this guy here was abused by his father and mother, abandoned by his father as well. And um, he has high levels of trauma, high levels of distressed inner game, right? And that's why when you can't clear these traumas, then you're you're handicapped. You, Literally handicapped. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you have to break those traumas. You have to cure those traumas. You have to release them. And the it's way, another form of a hero's journey that's just harder to break. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, so what we do is we have a team of people who do uh, hypnotherapy. So you, and, and this sounds crazy, I know, but just listen. I've done it myself. Mm. So you get hypnotized and your conscious mind goes to bed. And then they kind of tell you to relive the past yeah. moments that happen. And people have re started reliving these past moments and crying and like kind of like with the guide there you are releasing this trauma and if this is catharsis this is the goal of all therapy yeah. so they release this and so this happened to me i did a session because i was like, like i said i was super abused by like my aunt you know just verbally just like you're a devil you're a little fucking snake of a kid like your head up yeah yeah and dude i was nine yeah <laughs> i was like lady <laughs> like I just want pineapple juice and watch commercials, <laughs> <laughs> like you know. And you're like, you're a fucking antichrist, you know. It's really, it's crazy, and I, I, you don't know how to react to that because you're so helpless as a child, right? Yeah. And so, anyways, I did stuff, but when we relived that, you know, I started crying during the session. But I swear to God, when I was done with everything, I physically felt like 15 pounds lighter. Yeah, literally, your you know? spirituality is uh, that takes that t uh, that that weight off of you. Yeah, and and the thing is. So many people have that in them right now. I would say 90, 95% of the population, oh, man. It, and, it, and it stems from broken families, yes. broken homes where dad is not in charge. When a dad's in charge, there are no fucking strippers on the stripper pole. You know, and no son's in jail. And the sons are not in jail. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah, it all goes back to the nuclear family, guys. All, like, this, is all, what, yeah. this is what I'm trying to do with this show. I'm trying to bring it back, dude. Thank you. Nuclear family where dad is the boss. Yes. That's the way it works, kids. And if you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Have you seen the, the new movie, uh, Avatar? Yes, I did see it. This It's a patriarchal film. Yes, right? it is. It is. And it's doing great. You How know, crazy. You know, Disney. How crazy. Disney said, like, the woke shit, like. Nobody wants to see like the the, the four. Dude, I stopped agenda. watching so many new things that were from Disney. I have a three year old daughter, and I love watching Disney with her. But if it was any of the bullshit, I didn't want to watch it. Like, yeah, y'all ruined it yourself. Let me check out these super chats really quick since we already got three up there. Can can, can you click those for me? The starred. You can just click. Uh, we got ten dollars from Eric G. Dude, thank you so much, man. What percentage of men who consume RP content do you think will actually improve their lives? Shout out to MLD for coming on the Pro Pill Pod. Yeah, dude. Uh, so the percentage. What percentage of men do you think that watch RP content are actually going to change their lives? You think? That's... I want to say fifty. Like Oof. I, I want to give hope and say fifty, but probably twenty thirty. Yeah, I would say ten. Yeah, because it's just so hard to actually make it to the high value status and stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, or just make it in life. Period. Yeah, you'd you'd be surprised, man. When I sell my courses, so I have my accounts are on Teachable .com, and I can see the course completion rate when people buy the courses. Hey, uh, can you answer the phone for me, um, uh, Mike, really quick? Somebody should be calling. It might be one of the girls that's about to show up or something. We're getting swatted. Oh, and hey, baby, can you please <laughs> order the pizza, please? Thank you so much. <clears throat> Yeah, go ahead. Um, we're getting swatted. Yeah. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, I heard pizza and my brain farted. Dude, <laughs> like my brain farted. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh the was, RP content thing. Like, oh, like yeah, yeah, 10%. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So when I sell these people for the courses, dude, like 30% of the people don't even open the course. Wow. How would you pay for it and not open it? 
They just don't care. They're, yeah, like I'm like I was talking to Michael Sartain about this, and he was joking. He was like, "I mean, we're basically mo- uh, helping a lot of autistic people." Mm-hmm. He was saying it all live. I was like, "You're so funny," because it's almost partially true. Like it's just a bunch of people that have social anxiety or social issues, and they need the most help. Like, yeah. But yeah, some of them might pay for it, and then they don't even fucking do anything afterwards because they're so like fucked up on whatever shit they're doing at the time. Yeah, you know, um, with uh, the guys and the completion rate, it's just like. I don't know. It's just it just blows yeah. my mind. Uh, see, I'm I'm excited to do my first click model to see stuff like that. Uh, five dollars from Joe Cole. Met MLD at the FNF yacht party in Miami. Really genuine and relatable guy. Regret not having enough time to talk to him more. Man, shout out to you, bro. He's one of the homies from our Dallas Discord. Thank you so much Good for stuff. the five dollars, bro. Um, five dollars from Randall J. Shout out to MLD, one of the most genuine men out here in the space. I fucking agree. Make money, make muscles, learn game, hold frame. Much love from AJ. Jason and me, dude. 